The general idea of a mass spectrometry experiment is that we vaporize and then ionize the sample, kicking an electron out of the molecules and generating a radical cation, a species that has an unpaired electron, which we represent as a dot, and a positive charge. The molecular radical cation, what we call the molecular ion, quite frequently fragments, and this is particularly true for hard ionization methods like EI. And these fragments we observe in mass spectra as well with lower mass to charge ratio than the molecular ion. And in this video, we're going to begin talking about fragmentation pathways for some common functionality in organic compounds. The general idea here, typically with fragmentation, is that the cations that we get out, the cations that we observe as peaks in mass spectra, are typically relatively stable cations. So we can look for things like the potential for resonance stabilization, high substitution, so large numbers of, of carbon groups connected to the cationic carbon. These are structural features that are going to stabilize cations and lead them to appear in mass spectra. And we're going to start with probably the simplest class of organic compounds, the alkanes. Now, ionization of an alkane gives rise to simply an, an alkyl radical cation. And cleavage of CC bonds in alkane radical cations can produce lighter radicals and alkyl cations. And the radicals themselves, remember, go undetected because they have no charge. Only the charged cations are detected. However, we can infer that the radicals were given off in the fragmentation process by looking for gaps between peaks. For example, this minus 15, minus 29, minus 43, minus 57 indicates the loss of a radical with that molar mass, 29 grams per mole, 15 grams per mole, etc. And these numbers recur, they're quite common in mass spectra of organic compounds for reasons we're about to see. For example, the methyl radical CH3 has a molar mass of 15 grams per mole. So M minus 15 tends to indicate the loss of a methyl radical from the molecular ion. Ethyl radical has a mass of 29 grams per mole. And so M minus 29, we've lost an ethyl radical C2, CH2, CH3. Propyl, 43 grams per mole, and again, we see an M minus 43 peak in the mass spectrum corresponding to the loss of a 3-carbon radical. And finally, butyl radical, something like this, and of course it would be the same molar mass regardless of where the unpaired electron shows up. So I've drawn primary radicals here, but secondary radicals and, and even isomers like the terp-butyl radical are going to have the same molar mass in the case of 4 carbons saturated radical is going to have a molar mass of 57 grams per mole and sure enough we also see the loss of a four carbon radical fragment in this mass spectrum as well. So this particular example shows the mass spectrum of pentane C5H12. The molar mass is 72 grams per mole and we see the molecular ion right where we'd expect it at 72 but it's not the base peak. The base peak actually comes from fragmentation via loss of an ethyl group. And so here at M minus 15, we have loss of a methyl radical. And this gives a butyl cation that's left behind. Now I've drawn it secondary. It could just as well be primary. I only drew it secondary because this is going to be the more stable cation and is readily accessible via 1-2 rearrangement of the primary cation. But some 4-carbon saturated cation is going to show up at this molar mass. M minus 29. Well, we've lost an ethyl radical, so this is a 3-carbon saturated uh, cation, something like the isopropyl cation, like this, or the primary propyl cation there. M minus 43, now we're at a 2-carbon fragment. Notice that the molar mass here is 29 grams per mole, and this is a 2-carbon cation uh, with necessarily the positive charge on one of the ends. And then finally, M minus 57, we'll notice this corresponds to a molar mass of 15 grams per mole, and that is simply the CH3 cation. This is the methyl cation. So in this particular spectrum, the base peak corresponds to loss of an ethyl group and formation of, of this cation, um, which is relatively stable, being secondary, but we also see fragments derived from losses of other numbers of carbons, and this is common in the mass spectra of alkanes and of compounds containing long alkyl chains. Any compound containing a pentane chain, a five carbon uh, linear saturated chain of carbons, we would expect to display a similar pattern like this, in particular similar gaps between the peaks, corresponding to losses of different numbers of carbon chains.
When we start looking at branched alkanes, generally the fragments formed correspond to the most stable cations, and when it comes to carbocations, the more substituted the cation, the more stable. So the more carbon groups we have attached to the cationic center, the more stable is the cation. This, and this is more or less an inductive effect, stabilizing the cation. And resonance, as we'll see in the ensuing slides, comes into play as well. So for example here, 2,2-dimethylpentane radical cation is drawn here. This is the molecular ion of 2,2-dimethylpentane, and it's got a mass to charge ratio of 100. But the base peak in the spectrum occurs at an M over Z of 57, and this corresponds to the tert butyl cation, which is generated via essentially cleavage of this bond with the loss of a propyl radical, three carbon radical, leaving the tert butyl cation behind. So this is M over Z57, and notice it corresponds to a loss of 43 mass units from the molecular ion. That 43 mass units is built into an undetected radical, here it's specifically the propyl radical, that goes undetected because it's neutral. And how did we know fragmentation would occur to give this radical? Well, it's highly substituted three carbon groups attached to the cationic center. When it comes to alcohols and amines and related compounds containing lone pairs, we often think of the molecular ion as derived from loss of one of the lone pair electrons because these are relatively high energy electrons. And alcohols and amines are the most common context where you'll see this. So we think about the ionization process as involving taking, for example, this lone pair on the oxygen and literally just removing an electron from that position. And you'll sometimes see the positive charge drawn near the radical electron to indicate that that's kind of where the missing electron was lost from. The radical cationic character is at the oxygen atom. And this points to a particular type of fragmentation of alcohols and amines, as we'll see, undergo the same type of reaction called alpha cleavage, where there's a homolytic cleavage of a bond alpha to the hydroxyl group in an alcohol. So if we imagine the hydroxyl group is kind of our functional group of interest. We have an alpha carbon here, and so there's an alpha bond there. And homolytic cleavage of that bond actually leads to a resonance stabilized carbocation. So if we imagine taking this one electron, this half-headed arrow is showing movement of that one electron into a new bond, and we take one electron from the alpha bond and move it there, take the other electron from the alpha bond and place it at the other carbon, we end up with this cation and this radical fragment, which as usual goes undetected. Now the thing to notice about this cation and what makes alpha cleavage so ubiquitous is this is a resonance stabilized cation, right? And so resonance delocalization is what drives this fragmentation process. And it's typical of alcohols here for, and we could get potentially multiple different alpha cleavages. So I've sort of assumed here that this bond is not breaking to the R group on the left, but it absolutely could to potentially give a different resonance stabilized cation like this. Alcohol radical cations can also lose water and the result then is an alkene radical cation. And the idea here is a kind of elimination of H plus and OH minus, quote unquote, from the radical cation. The thing to notice here is that this fragment has a mass that is 18 less than the molecular ion, that 18 corresponding to the molar mass of water, H and OH. Like alcohols, amine radical cations also commonly undergo fragmentation via alpha cleavage, and the result is a cation highly analogous to this with a nitrogen replacing the oxygen right here. So through electron flow that's exactly analogous to this, we get a new carbon-nitrogen pi bond. We get homolytic cleavage of this bond to produce this radical fragment, which as usual goes undetected. And the ion we detect is this stabilized iminium cation with positive charge shared between the nitrogen and the carbon here. Like alcohols and amines, ketones and aldehydes, which contain a carbon-oxygen double bond, typically undergo ionization to give a molecular ion with radical character on the carbonyl oxygen and positive charge, at least formally, on the carbonyl oxygen. And these radical cations undergo an interesting kind of, of rearrangement, elimination type of reaction called the McLafferty rearrangement. You can think of the McLafferty rearrangement a couple of different ways. What ends up happening here is the net transfer of a hydrogen atom here at the gamma carbon to the carbonyl oxygen. And if we count the atoms, one, two, three, four, 
five, not counting the hydrogen involved in this process, it looks like a 1,5 hydrogen transfer. We can also think of this as cleavage of the alpha-beta bond. So if we think of the carbonyl group as our functionality of interest, the alpha carbon is next door, and then the beta carbon, this bond breaks homolytically with one electron from the bond going to the alpha carbon and one to the beta carbon. And this occurs together with the 1,5 hydrogen transfer. Now, what drives the McLafferty rearrangement is this cation right here. This cation is a relatively stable species because positive charge and radical character are shared over multiple atoms. It's an enol radical cation called an enol because it has an alkene connected to an alcohol OH group. So it's an enol radical cation. And these resonance structures are showing us that the, the uh, radical character is shared over carbon and oxygen. The positive charge, we could also argue, is shared over carbon and oxygen in this species. So it benefits from resonance stabilization and is readily observable in mass spectra. An alkene is a byproduct. Notice that this alkene involves the alpha and beta carbons. And so, for example, the alpha carbon is here and the beta carbon here, and that goes undetected. But if we know the structure we're expecting for the molecular ion, we can infer the molar mass of this fragment and look for a difference between two peaks that corresponds to the molar mass of this alkene. That's a dead giveaway for a McLafferty rearrangement. And this is, again, very common in mass spectra of ketones and aldehydes that have these gamma carbons with hydrogens that can be readily transferred to the carbonyl oxygen through electron flow like this.